Um, so I think something that I've learned is like, I, th- I think self growth and like self development is way more important than I think people put emphasis on. Like, I think if you write a song, you think it's really good. Hell yeah. And then you write a song a year later and it's way better than what you did a year ago. Like that's, that that's the most important part, right? Like you always want to be one upping yourself. Well, uh, my name is Carlos Sagao. Nice to meet you. I'm from Mexico. It's pretty, pretty nice to talk to you. Nice. Nice to meet you. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about uh, your new song, Growing Up on the Internet. Yes. Oh, my God. I can tell you a lot about it. I can't tell you a little about it. Um, It's so... Oh, my God. It kind of goes back to like when I first started posting stuff online. I started out as a My Chemical Romance fan account because I love MCR, big emo. Um, and then I started like posting guitar covers of myself and pictures of myself. And I started growing an audience from that. Just like I would post like 10 times a day, just like, oh, I love this thing. This thing's cool. Um, and then as I started gradually growing, that there were more instances of just like really fucking weird people trying to interact with me online. Um, and like growing up, because I put so much of my life into the internet, because like I was in the closet, couldn't come out at school. So the only place I could be myself was the internet. Um, I threw so much of my time in there that like all that weird stuff that happened was just normal to me. Um, and I think the thing that sparked me writing this song was I went through my camera roll recently because I was like, oh, it's nice to reminisce on your teenage years. Um, and I scrolled and I found a, a picture of a tattoo uh, that a 40 year old man got of me when I was 15. Um, and he would like he would like comment like oh you're so sexy on my pictures and like me and my friends were like the same age and because we were teenagers we were just like oh it's the local pedo and we just found it funny um so like that that's how the song initially started because I was like I feel like I'm only just processing how weird some of that shit that I went through when I was a kid was um but yeah it's a song about that um and I don't know also like I've more recently because i've been doing youtube since i was 15 and i'm 24 now so almost 10 years um like because i've been online for so long i'm like okay cool i get it like the algorithm and then you gotta post this and you gotta post that and then people want this and then people want that and i'm fucking tired um so like yeah that the weird pedo that got me tattooed and then also like big fat rise in transphobia making me not want to be on the internet is like all those things mushed up into a song where I'm just like, I just need to process what the fuck happened back then and also how I feel about the internet now. Um, but I, I definitely think it's something that like a lot of the younger generation will just absolutely vibe with. Like being in those really dodgy chat rooms when you're like 13 years old just because you found a dodgy link and you want to know what's in it. Um, that That's kind of what it is. That sounds great, man, because a lot of people can relate with this. And, and yeah. I know you've been on the internet for so long and you've dealt with a lot of stuff. So I'm I'm interested. How do you deal with, with hate, for example? Um, so this is like an interesting question, because like I it just became part of my day to day life when I was like very young. Um, so I'm kind of like not. It, th- th- there's times now and then again that there are like comments where I'm like, oh, you didn't know, but you just hit on one of a one of those really big insecurities that I purposely don't tell the internet. Um, so there's the occasion where like they really piss me off, but like I guess the way that I deal with hate is I just like take the piss out of it because like I I feel like it's very easy to see a horrible comment on the internet and be like, oh, this person somehow figured out this thing that I'm insecure about. That means that they know me well enough to judge my character well enough to make a negative comment about me. Um, whereas like comments that I get nowadays of people just being like, you look like a girl. And I'm like my guy like like people meet me and they say nice to meet you sir like i'm not going to take the comments of like some rando probably living in a fucking his mom's basement like I, i'm not going to take what he says to heart um and so like the thing that i've done in maybe like the past few years is just made content out of it cuz like there's a definite rise in transphobia in in the us b- big fat bad um and in the uk as well um so i've i started just like 
<laughs> posting videos where I just react to things that transphobes say. Um, and it's entertaining because it's, it's just stupid. Like they just say the most stupid things. Like they'll they'll see a picture of Michelle Obama and be like, oh, she's a trans woman because her voice is lower. Like, like it's like brain rot. Um, so like I like to just take those videos, react to them, take the piss out of them, but then also give people the arguments that they may not be able to conjure up themselves is just like it's like, for example, a thing that people say nowadays to like trans men like me is they'll be like, oh, well, you're going to have a stroke. You're going to have a heart attack because of the testosterone. You find that in a video, you react to it, you look at the data and you can literally just say, oh, so yes, I am more likely to have a stroke now that I'm on testosterone. But my likelihood has just risen to that level of my brother because <laughs> testosterone isn't going to give me a stroke. It, it it just means that testosterone thickens your blood, you know, like I'll just be as likely as my dad. Well, no, actually, no, he has high blood pressure. Um, but like just as likely as anybody born a guy would be. So like that's the kind of thing. Like see a shitty comment, see a shitty video, take the piss out of it, and then also it's kind of education at the same time. That's probably one of the things that I admire the most about you that that you're capable of uh, making fun of it and, and making these videos and I love your platform because you give voice to some topics that are usually hard to talk so, yeah. so tell me why did you decide to do this sorry I, you cut out a bit what did you say why did you decide to do this kind of things oh um yeah I don't know I like I <laughs> there's never like intention behind anything I do I'm kind of I'm very ADHD in the way that I'm just like oh, I want to do this thing maybe I'll do it um so like, yeah, it was never the plan to do that. It was more just that I was getting these comments that I found funny. Um, and I showed them to my friends and they'd be like, that's insane. That's hilarious. Um, so it was more just like, this is just fun. Like, this is fun for me. And that there are, I mean, obviously, like, I think, I think recently in the last few years, the transphobia thing has pissed me off more than anything because what annoys me isn't that people are ignorant because you can't help being ignorant like if you don't know something you don't know something but what annoys me is just like the way that the media will push these ignorant opinions and won't fact check it and everybody will just take it like for face value um so i think that's something that i've struggled with recently and i think if the media aren't doing that that they're not bringing people on to fact check the bullshit that people say i'm like well i i have a platform one this is fun it's entertaining to just rip into these people who just don't know what they're talking about and like two it's helping combat the kind of thing that like mainstream media doesn't necessarily do a good job of oh i see and, and there is a video that i that i really like which is answering trans questions you're too afraid to ask yeah because we are afraid to ask you know yes. we have no yeah. information at least here in latin america there's still a lot of misinformation about this kind of things yeah you know yeah so i believe it's pretty important to do these kind of things yeah well thank you yeah i like i <laughs> i've the thing the thing online is like there's this like overwhelming overarching opinion that like trans people are like hypersensitive and they're snowflakes where like i'm i'm in the position where like if somebody reacts badly to an ignorant question they're probably hurting like they're they're probably not doing good where, where for me, it's just like, I love answering those questions because where else are you going to get the information? You can Google it or you can just spend your entire life wondering what the right thing is to say. So like, I, yeah, I, I, I love answering uncomfortable questions, I guess. I, I don't know. It is funny for me. <laughs> and it's great, you know, because those uncomfortable questions are often the questions that teach us the most. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I really believe so. What was it like uh, to you when you first knew you were trans? Uh, was it hard to process for you? So it's like, it's not, it's the thing that I say a lot of the time. It's like, it's, there's not like one moment where I'm like, oh, I'm transgender. Better change my pronouns. Um, it, it was more like a, like a few events, like throughout my entire life. But like, to give like a quick summary, like I was four or five years old asking my mom to give me a boy haircut. Um... <laughs> I, you know how men piss in urinals, like they face the toilet. When I was four, I was like, oh, guys just face the toilet backwards. So I would just squat on the toilet backwards and be like, this is how boys pee. And I was, I was like four years old, five years old. And that was just like, that was just ingrained in my head. 
um so like like early childhood thing uh stuff that was a big thing um always wanted to like play as a boy when you play like parents and like house and dress up I was always the dad or the brother or the dog um and then yeah I, I guess I didn't really like fully discover it because I didn't have the language to know what the fuck was going on I was just like why do I why do I why do I, well, why do I want a deep voice and why am I terrified to grow boobs um I, I guess like the I first really heard about trans people when I was like 13 14 um and yeah it was it was really hard to come to terms with because I was in des- d- denial so bad even though like looking back Jesus Christ like anybody could have picked me out of the lineup and been like that's a trans guy um but yeah it was difficult because like I think the first thing for me was like the, there's a thing called a binder which like flattens your chest um it's like a sports bra and I told myself look I'm gonna buy a really cheap one to prove to myself that I don't like this, that that I don't want to have a flat chest. Of course it came and I put it on and I was like, oh, fuck, fuck. Um, so yeah, like it was it was really hard to come to terms with because I think the scariest thing for me wasn't the idea of going on testosterone or getting surgery. Because for me, I was just like, oh, I can finally feel at peace, like in my own body. The The, the scary part for me was like the guilt of eventually having to expect people to change their language about me like I and like change their perception of me so like I felt so much guilt about um like telling my parents that I was trans I was like hey like you've known me for 15 16 17 years and I'm actually the complete opposite of what you thought I was uh and I didn't know it myself uh but could you change entirely how you see me in your brain and reframe how you view me as a person and change the language that you use for me even though you've used this name since I was literally born um, I think that was the hardest part for me is just like the guilt, I guess, because for me, it was like, this is a personal problem and I didn't want to make it other people's issues. But obviously that's that's not that's not how other people viewed it or view it at all. But like that, that was a big thing. Um, but yeah, it, it was hard in the sense that like in, in my mind, trans was like a bad thing. I was like, oh, well, like because I'd only heard it in instances of like a trans woman coming into my school bathroom, literally just going to the toilet. And then some girl in my year, like calling her slurs. And like the first thing I ever heard about trans people was a slur. Um, so like you you grow up like just absorbing all of that. And then when you finally realize that that's something that you're experiencing, you're like, oh shit, I'm that big bad thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I was very lucky that everyone was really supportive. I, I came out to my mom and she was like, oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> Of course. Um, and then came out to my dad and he was like, yeah, yeah, you, you never really acted like a girl. Like, yeah, of course. And it went really smoothly and everything was great. But yeah, I, I built it up real big in my head. It was it was a very hard thing to accept in myself. I think the self-acceptance was way harder than actually coming out. I totally agree. And I think uh, listening to you speak about it, it, it's really inspiring. And And I also believe art can be a teacher. No, artists can be teachers. And I love about your music that it can be something that people can really connect with because it feels like so personal. Uh, yeah. So are you conscious when you're writing a song that a lot of people may feel like like this song belongs to them? Yes, the, the, more, the more I release stuff, the more I think about that. Because when I, when I first started writing, I was like, oh, I just want to write a song. So I'm going to write a song and then I'm going to release it. And then that's my song. That's my song that I wrote. That's not your song. Um, And that's obviously not how that works because as soon as you release a song, it's everybody else's. And like, everybody is like Googling what the lyrics mean, like asking questions. Um, But I I guess like it is something that I think about in the studio, but it, it doesn't impact. I mean, I wouldn't say that it impacts my writing. The Like the only way that it would impact my writing is when I'm like, oh, is this too personal? Like, is this, is this something that I want like thousands of people to know about me, to see about me? But when that kind of things hap- thing happens, like it, it's very easy to like have a phrase that you've written that's like deeply personal and then to kind of just like rewrite <laughs> the entire phrase and it still has the exact same meaning to you, but it's maybe not as obvious to other people. Um, like I, I could think of like a few lyrics that I wrote like that. Um, but yeah, like I, I definitely think about how people will receive it more now that like, I've released two EPs, so there are there are songs that I know 
people will love and there are songs that I'm like, oh, are they like, are they, are they going to like this? Um, but yeah, I like uh, the people around me, I'm, I trust a lot. So if I write a load of shit and they tell me it's shit, they haven't done that yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, it's definitely something I think about. Okay. And about the songs that you have released so far, which one do you believe is the most personal to you? Do you connect the most? Oh, I mean, like probably Asthma Attack. That was the first one that I released. Um, I am the physical embodiment of everything I never wanted to be. People must think And I, I mean, like that, that was like the trans song like for for a lot of people in my audience because like I wrote that when I was I wrote it when I was 15 and then recorded it just before I started testosterone because I was like it would be wrong for me to sing this song about how much I hate myself and how uncomfortable I feel and how I don't see a future for myself it would be wrong for me to sing that in my current voice because yeah exactly like it, it wouldn't make sense for me to sing it with a deep voice um so I think that was the most personal because that was like it was the equivalent of just like a diary entry that I put to ukulele chords. Um, and at the point of me writing it, I didn't think about releasing it. I didn't think about what other people would think about it. So I, I guess that was the most like un, uncut, I guess. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. it. That was the most like raw songwriting, I guess. Okay. Now, musically, what is something that you haven't done yet and you would like to do? Oh. That's a good question. Musically, is this just writing or just like in, in general music? Oh my God. Jesus. Um, fuck. That's a good question. Sorry, I'm like stalling so I can think. Um, mm, I don't know. Like, I'm so, I like, <laughs> I don't have goals. Like, I don't have ambitions. I just do things. Um, I, I guess maybe like, maybe like supporting artists that I really like, like I've got a, I've got a tour coming up with Enter Shikari who I love. Um, so I, I guess maybe just like collaborating more with people like that. Like I'd love to tour with Youngblood or Waterparks, um, that kind of thing. Cause like, I'm very lucky that like I have the audience that I have. Cause like, I've only done headline tours. Um, like I've done two headline US tours, two UK headline tours, and I did like a little underplay with Shikari, but they were like they were like little shows. Um, so yeah, I, I guess just like touring more with artists that I really look up to because I've I've not done a big tour yet until next February. Okay, and any plans for a new album? Oh yeah, oh yeah, like that's I'm literally going into the studio tomorrow. Um, for like three weeks, I've got, I've I've got I know what songs we're gonna put on the album. Um, four or five are like completely recorded, mixed, mastered, and then other ones are in like various stages of like half written or like fully written melody, vocal, guitar wise, but not instrumentally. Um, but yeah, that that's my that's my job for the next month until I go on tour. Okay, we're so excited for that. And you know, finally, I always ask this question, and I think in this case, it's particularly important. Uh. What is your advice for all those people who are watching and, and you know are kind of following your steps? You know, you're having conversations who are probably trans people who want to come out and, and work in the music business or the entertainment industry. What would be your advice to them? Oh, um, I, the first thing that pops into my head is like, um, only compare yourself to yourself. If you get what I mean, like, don't because a lot of what I did. And this applies to both just like like trans stuff and music stuff. A lot of what I did when I was younger was I would compare how I looked to a trans guy that had been on testosterone for 10 years, had a beard. And then like I was like 15, like I was a 15 year old girl in the closet. And I'm like, why don't I look like like Jason Momoa or some shit? Um, I, li literally. Um, and the same with music. Like my first song, I was like, why isn't this as good as my Chemical Romance's entire disc discography? Um so I think something that I've learned is like, I, th I think self growth and like self development is way more important than I think people put emphasis on. Like, I think if you write a song, you think it's really good. Hell yeah. And then you write a song a year later and it's way better than what you did a year ago. Like that's, that, that's the most important part, right? Like you always want to be 
one upping yourself. Um, I guess I like, only compare yourself to yourself and don't put too much pressure on yourself to know exactly who you are or what you want to do or what your sound is or what you want your art to look like. Um, because a lot of that comes from just like trial and error. Like, yeah, I, I think especially with like, like gender identity and like sexuality, like I, I started off thinking I was non-binary, um, then realized I wasn't, I was just a trans guy. And then when I transitioned, I was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I've, I've only been into guys my entire life. And then like three years ago, like out of the blue, I was like, wait, I like women. Um, and I was like, I'm 24, like I was 21 when I realized that I was bi. So I think a lot of it is just like trial and never, error, self-discovery. Um, and yeah, I, I think social media has a way of making people feel very insecure and very inferior. And it makes people compare themselves to people like at the top of their game. So I think, yeah, I, I think work on yourself before you try and compare yourself to people that have been doing this shit with fucking hundreds of people on their team. That is a great advice. Man, it, it was so nice to talk to you. I have so many friends that um, are big fans of you. So you have a, a big community of fandom here in Mexico. Hell yeah. Uh, we wait for you to tour here soon. And uh, it was so nice to talk to you, man. Oh, this is great. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>